everybody and welcome to the House of Springers. This is our new puppy. This is Gunner. Gunner came to us from Springville Springers, uh, somewhere around Peterborough. Uh, it's kind of an interesting story about how we actually got Gunner. Uh, initially uh, we started planning this whole endeavor since January this year. It was uh, supposed to be just a, a one dog adventure but we've actually uh, decided to get two and uh, maybe start doing some breeding in the next couple of years but that'll uh, that video will uh, follow uh, once we get our other puppy Bailey which will she will be coming in September of this year right now it's September 2nd uh, 2021 and uh, yeah we're in northern Ontario and um, this is Gunner, as I said. So I think um, the, the bit of a background story about Gunner was um, in January we made contact with the breeder and uh, we're told that uh, the prospective mother would be in heat sometime in July and then uh, we would be able to pick uh, the original Gunner up at uh, sometime in September, early October. Well, Mother Nature didn't cooperate with us at all, and uh, or with the breeder, and the original mother, Mocha, uh, did not go into heat. So um, we kept contacting the breeder, finding out what uh, what was going on, and um, so they, they put us on a bit of a waiting list because they weren't sure if Mocha was actually ever going to go into heat. So it was uh, about a week ago now, a little bit over a week, and uh, I was sitting up at home and uh, read my email and an email came in and it was the breeder saying that uh, due to a circumstance from a, a couple from the United States they were unable to pick up their male pup that uh, this pup uh, this gunner came available and uh, within 24 hours we were actually on the road down to Peterborough to pick up gunner were we ready possibly as ready as we wanted to be maybe not but we did have uh, all of the stuff that we needed to start with Gunner, including his kennel, uh, some leashes, uh, food, and uh, we were ready to go. So uh, we took, uh, Sydney and I took a drive down to uh, the breeders, and uh, it took about three and a half hours to get there, and uh, we stayed for about 45 minutes. I uh, got some good information from Bonnie and Frank at Springville. And uh, away we went. We went home and um, interesting story about that is uh, Springville, uh, the breeders themselves offer a 30 day guarantee, pup guarantee, along with a three year um, health guarantee. But the, the 30 day pup guarantee is if you don't like your pup for whatever reason, you can actually give them back and wait for another one. And, it was Sydney kind of looked at me and said, uh, no, we're not giving this pup back. This is going to be the pup that was supposed to come. Uh, initially, it w he was never going to be our pup, and uh, I'm a strong believer, and we are all a strong believer that things happen for a reason. So, this is him. He's a week, a week in. We've had him for a little over a week. Uh, it's been a bit of a whirlwind. We've uh, started kennel training crate training, sorry, and uh, potty training. And uh, our philosophy is consistency and repetitiveness. And uh, within the whole um, family structure from, right from the youngest child, right up to the, the, the mom and dad, to us, that we are following this philosophy of repetitiveness and consistency uh, with everything that we're going to do. Um, not, I'm not sure what we're going to call this series, uh, Training Tucker, but it's going to be, uh, we'll figure out something what we're going to call, but we're going to um, start making some videos, posting them to uh, our socials, and uh, we're going to um, show everybody the progress that we're having with uh, the training. And um, just, you know, we, we want to start basic with basic training, which is the, you know, heel, sit, stay, and come. Those are the four fundamentals that I've, with, with all the dogs that we've had, that's the four fundamentals that I've started off with. Um, I don't want to get into retriever training or anything like that until we have those fundamentals down. Uh, again, he's only 10 weeks, a little over 10, 10 weeks and two days. 
So uh, we're working on baby steps right now. Uh, as far as potty training, um, initially we started off about every about every three hours we get up and bring them outside. Now we're down to putting them in bed at 10 o'clock at night and uh, getting up uh, whenever we get up around 5.36 and we bring him out and he does his business and hasn't had, he's had a couple of little accidents in the house for uh, bowel movements, but that was strictly our fault. We didn't wait long enough for him to do his business outside, so, uh, but that was the initial couple days and uh, we were just, all of us were trying to get uh, settled in, including Tucker uh, and Gunner. Uh, and our other dog, you know, it's funny, our other dog, Tucker, who's 11, which we'll show up a little video of um, within this this series, is um, starting to get a hang of it. Uh, Gunner is really comfortable around him now, and actually too comfortable. He's actually jumping on him and biting his ears, and Tucker doesn't want anything to do with it. But they'll be best of friends soon. Um, feeding, so we feed uh, both dogs twice a day. And uh, it's, uh, it's not a, uh, a free feed, it's a feed of 10 minutes. They have 10 minutes to eat the food. And trust me, this, this little pup here is eating three quarters of a cup each meal. And uh, he's, he's eating his food quickly because um, he was, as, as uh, the breeders had trained all their pups to eat uh, twice a day. And uh, I was told from Bonnie that their dogs actually only eat once a day as they get adults. I'm, I'm feeding our dogs twice a day. Uh, it, it just works well for, for our family. So um, as for um, the sleeping arrangements, again, um, we crate train all our pups. Uh, our 11-year-old Tucker, he is no longer in crate. He hasn't been in the crate for years. Uh, crate training is, is, is uh, I feel, is pretty important. Just because uh, it gives, you do not want your animal, your puppy to, to have free roam, free reign of the house. It's just too much work for uh, any one person or any five people to chase them around. Uh, they get into mischief, they're, they're, they're curious. So what we do is we, uh, in the morning we get them up, we bring them outside, uh, bring them for about a three or four kilometer walk. And then uh, we play with them for a bit and get them tuckered out, tired, and then we put them in this crate and we let them stay in this crate first little while he would whine a little bit and now he's comfortable with it he's, he's happy with it some people feed their pups in the crate just to make them um, a little more comfortable when they're in their crate but uh, I don't believe in that I, I feed my pups uh, all my dogs together uh, kind of gets a, a bond with them too uh, with, with all the all the animals now uh, training, so um, we've been working on the sit, sit, and um, so the sit is more right now. Initially, we initially we did use a few treats, but we are no longer using treats for training. Um, Gunner here, who's trying to starting to fall asleep because he's getting comfortable. Gunner is doing well with with sitting. I know my uh, uh, the rest of the family wants to do the the tricks, you know, just pause and roll over and. So, I mean, it's important to them, and I don't mind doing that for them. And uh, Tucker, our gunner here, is actually really good at shaking both paws uh, now without even food. And our 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 way of, uh, of getting him to do that was praise and praising praising him well. Like, once he's done, it's like, good, good dog. And, and we pet him, and we give him lots of attention. And, you know, throughout the years, we found that giving them attention for us works well. Um, that's, that's the issue we have uh, with, with tree training is if you don't have your pouch or you forget your pouch and uh, your puppy is so used to responding to treats, we find that uh, sometimes they, they become less responsive and uh, they more or less give you the snout. Okay, so again, welcome back. We did get a battery change. And unfortunately, that happens when you're recording some video. But uh, Savannah, if you want to zoom down and uh, Tucker down here. So this is Tucker, our 11 year old. Um, Tucker is, has had his time with, uh, you know, with, with doing the uh, training for retrieving and uh, getting animals for us. So he's, uh, he's kind of semi-retired right now. He's actually helping us train gunnery. So um, 
we always walk them both together and they walk with each other. So our hope is to use Tucker, like we did all of our other dogs, to, to learn the, the, the basic commands. Now with, with Tucker here, it's pretty easy. I can walk away and with, with a single command, just tell him to sit, stay, heal. And, and, and I'll demonstrate that for you. And this is what we, we look for for all our animals. So, um, so now if you want to just uh, zoom in on Tucker, I'll make a few steps. Tucker, stay. Tucker. Sit. Good job. Good job. Okay, heel. 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 Good heel. Up. Sit. Sit. Down. <laughs> so, as you can tell, um, that took a lot of training, and uh, it was uh, it was difficult at times. But uh, we uh, we all persevered with that, and uh, it seems to work. So I'm going to uh, get Tucker off the place, and uh, I'm going to show the little bit of work we've done with Gunner here. Gunner likes to chew on sticks, and uh, we're trying to stop doing that just because. Uh, it does damage their teeth, as you know. If we look at Tucker and zoom in on his tooth, that's from chewing chewing a stick. And uh, unfortunately, it, it 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 bent his tooth out when he was younger, uh, when he was coming in, when he was teething. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the outcome of that. So he's got the uh, he's got the redneck tooth happening. So, but didn't doesn't affect his giddy up and go. Okay, Tuck, here, here, come, sit down down. Now you stay. So, now, the thing with place training, this is very important, is that when we put gunner, or if you're putting any of your animals on, on a placemat, is you want to make sure that you are really, really quick, that you are firm on your correction, and that you're consistent with your reaction. So, when I put gunner down on this place, I'm what I want him to do is I want him to stay there. Now, as soon as he takes his foot off that place, I'm going to correct him firmly. And with consistency, I'm going to put him back on the mat and, and say the one command is place. And then we're going to see how long he takes. This could take a minute. This could take 10 minutes. But my reaction and what I want from him is, especially in the early time, is I don't want him to be sitting there for 10 minutes. I want him to be have to be sitting there on that place without hesitation, without moving off, I'm looking at 30 seconds. That's all I want at this point. I don't want any longer than that because the, the, as a pup, it can be told with all the distractions here, he's distracted. So if I can get 30 seconds of, out of him at this point, I'm happy with that. I would like to do this in the house. It's a little dark for filming. Less wind, nothing moving around, no distractions or very few distractions. But uh, we've, we've done this a couple times already, and we have good success, and we've done it up on our deck. So I'm gonna start doing this, and Savannah, I want you to, to film me doing this. And what I'm gonna do is just, just stay still, and I'm gonna put him down, and he may wanna go towards the camera, but I'm gonna get his attention. Okay, stay, place, place. Nope. Place, place. I missed that there. I had a perfect opportunity to give him praise. But he's still there. And I'm happy with what he's doing right now. Gunner. Gunner. Place. Good boy. Good boy. Now I'm going to give him praise because he has done well for a 10 week old pup right now. Now, I like to do this about two or three times a day. And just, you know, I'll pick him up now. Give him, a, give him some praise and just, you know, I'll give him a few minutes to recover and I'll do it one more time. Because what I'm looking for consistency and repetitiveness. So when he gets on there, he knows that when, when he hears the command place, that that's what's going to happen. Okay? 
Now, I want to make sure he's settled down a bit, that he's not squirming. And I'm going to put him down. I'm going to do it again. You ready? Okay. That's good. Place. 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 No. Place. 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 Good puppy. Good puppy. 10, 15 seconds. I'm happy with that. And that is going to be as far as I want to get him today. There's a lot of distraction. There's a lot of stuff happening. And I'm super happy with that. He, he's, you know, this is our third time doing place training. The first time was a bit of a bear. Uh, and I regret not videotaping it just because we had a whole bunch. It was a bit of a whirlwind just trying to get stuff going. So, but uh, yeah, as we move forward, we're going to start recording, getting maybe two or three videos a week up. And sometimes they're just going to be, you know, just going to be five, ten minute videos. And sometimes they're just going to be, a, you know, a minute and a half just to say, hey, this is our progress that we've done today. And uh, yeah, and maybe the next one we'll show him some feeding and maybe in his kennel and, and doing some stuff like that. All right, so until next time, this is Gunner saying, see you later. Bye Gunner, say bye-bye.